Good morning. It's good to have you with us again as we continue in our study of Isaiah. Last week we uh, covered the sixth chapter and we move ahead today to cover the seventh chapter. Our lesson begins actually in the seventh verse, but it would be impossible if we started at that point to understand uh, Isaiah's reaction. And uh, so I want to begin today uh, as we cover this prophecy of Isaiah to begin in the first verse of the seventh chapter. Now at the time of this a prophecy, uh, ten tribes, ten of the twelve tribes, had split from Judah and Benjamin to form the northern kingdom, and it was called Israel, and Pekah was the king at that time. The southern kingdom uh, consisted of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, and at that time, Ahaz was king. Uzziah had, had died, and Israel had made an alliance with Syria, whose king was Aram, uh, hoping to fend off an Assyrian invasion. They had their eyes on territory in the west, and so they were trying to bring in more and more territory uh, to the northern kingdom. Isaiah was counseling, trying very hard to keep Isaiah, or to keep uh, uh, Ahaz from, from forming a counter-alliance with Assyria. Uh, that would then make uh, uh, Judah simply a a vassal of Assyria, and so Isaiah was discouraging Ahaz from doing that. So as we begin, as we look at this study of in Isaiah, Ahaz was an evil king. Uh, he was not being uh, obedient to God, and Isaiah had a real struggle trying to keep him in line. So we read in verse 1, when Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of, of Uzziah, and was king of Judah, king Rezan of Aram, and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, but they could not overpower it. Uh, this event was called a Syro Ephraim uh, War. Now the house of David, of course we're keeping now with the line of David, uh, from which it has been uh, prophesied that uh, the king, uh, uh, the Messiah would come. Uh, the house of David was told, Aram has allied itself with Ephraim. So the hearts of Ahaz and the people were shaken as the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. So again, this house of David, uh, Judah, uh, Ahaz is the king. Um, Israel is a part of the northern kingdom. And the house of David was in kind of a panic. They were, uh, their knees were knocking. They were uh, fearful of this, uh, this potential attack uh, from the north. So in verse 3 we read, Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out, you and your son, Shura Jasub, and that uh, means a, a remnant or a, a, a part of. And so they were told to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to Washerman's Field. We don't know exactly. We don't really uh, know where the, the pool was, the upper pool. Uh, we do know that 
that water was very critical to a people under siege. And so uh, the Lord wanted Isaiah to go out and meet Ahaz to discuss the situation. And in the fourth verse, the Lord tells Isaiah, now I want you to say to him, be careful, uh, keep calm, uh, don't be afraid, do not lose heart, because these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram, and the sons of Ramallah. So don't let them bother you, these two smoldering stubs. Uh, that, of course, is, is Rezin, the king of North, uh, the northern kingdom, and Pekah, who uh, uh, is king of, of Aram. So don't, don't let these two bother you. They're just smoldering stubs and they really can't do you any harm. So I want you, Isaiah is saying, to put your trust in God. But Ahaz, being an evil king, is resisting. He doesn't want to do that. And he says, you know, I really can't, uh, I can't depend on God. I don't trust God. Uh, I'm going to build my own relationships, and in the back of his mind, he's thinking that he can establish a relationship with Assyria, and while he would be simply a vassal for them, have to pay uh, them uh, uh, fees each year and, and would be under their command, he thought this was better than trusting God. So Aram, Ephraim, and Ramaliah, son, have plotted your ruin, saying, let's invade Judah, let us tear it apart, and divide it among themselves, and make the son of Tabiel king over it. So here we see where uh, the threat lies, and, you know, if you don't do what we say, then we'll just come down and throw you out, and make... Uh, Tabiel king over it. He would be simply a puppet king doing whatever they wanted to do. So here, having established this background, this context from where we are, are uh, beginning, in the seventh verse, uh, Isaiah writes, yet this is what the sovereign Lord says. It will not take place. It will not happen. This attack from the north, it's not going to fly. So trust in God. For the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is only Rezin. Only Rezin, who is the king. So here is where we find uh, Isaiah trying to protect uh, the line of David. And then in the uh, latter part of the eighth verse, it says, within 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. And this occurred, this came to pass, uh, this property, uh, this prophecy uh, came to pass in 722 B.C. when uh, Assyria uh, destroyed uh, uh, Samaria and, and this uh, came to pass, this prophecy. And from the, the remnant that were following God uh, in Judah and the Sumerians that came in, that what was left of the Sumerians, this integration uh, led to the Samaritan uh, people. And so uh, this uh, uh, reports or is a, to be the northern kingdom 
as a whole. Ephraim then was that. So the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Pekah. And here is a very important verse that, that Isaiah uh, proclaims to Ahaz. If you do not stand firm in your faith, if you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Your faith, your belief, uh, this is what you must do. Ahaz was reluctant to, to follow God. He had trouble being obedient. And Isaiah is saying, if you don't stand firm in your faith, then the same thing that's, that happened to Syria and Israel is going to happen to you, and you will be destroyed. And then God gives Ahaz a second chance. Amazing uh, gift of grace to Ahaz and to the people of Judah. God offered to give them a sign. Uh, in verse 10, it says, Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God, for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. So God, speaking to Ahaz, has said, ask me for a sign, whether it's great, big, or small. You ask me to give you a sign to prove my power and to prove my, my omnipotence to to prove to you that I am with you. Just ask me for a sign, and I will give it to you. Well, amazingly, Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Of course, quoting from Deuteronomy, and, and famously uh, quoted by Jesus at the temple when tempted by the devil. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Of course, he had his own plan then. Um, it was this clever use of Scripture, clever use of uh, acting out uh, as a pious person. But he was really uh, very deceitful. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? So compare now to what Isaiah is saying to Ahaz. Back in verse 11, he said, Your God, when uh, talking to Ahaz about a sign from God. He said, your God, and now recognizing uh, uh, Ahaz's deceit and dishonesty, I'm, you know, he didn't fool Isaiah. Isaiah caught him in the act, and he says, now, will you try the patience of my God also? So then, in a very interesting uh, transition, I guess, verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. So the Lord is saying, God is saying, Look, if you're not going to ask me for a sign, then by golly, I'll give you one myself. I'll show you my power. And so he says in, in that verse, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And of course, this 
prophecy was fulfilled in the New Testament in Matthew chapter 1, verses uh, 23 and 24, that, that uh, answers this prophecy and its fulfillment with the birth of Jesus. But there is a little bit of difference here. The word used uh, for virgin is Alma, spelled A-L-M-A, sometimes spelled with, a, with an H. But this uh, can mean a woman of marrying age, uh, a virgin a woman that uh, has never had relationships with a man. Uh, it could be just a woman that is uh, of age for marriage. So there is underlying this uh, the possibility or the real probability that we're talking about a virgin, or Isaiah is talking about a virgin who is uh, of marrying age, gets married, conceives, have a, has a child. Uh, on the other hand, if we look at the fulfillment of this prophecy uh, from Matthew's perspective and from what we believe God has, has told us, uh, we are looking at the Virgin Mary, who, who the Holy Spirit uh, brings about a pregnancy and is therefore a virgin not only before she is pregnant with Jesus, but after she conceives and becomes pregnant with Jesus. There is the miracle that she is a virgin both before and after conception. Here we're simply looking at a, a virgin lady who gets married, uh, conceives, has a baby. In Jesus, the real miracle occurs. God with us. What a promise to the people of Judah and what a promise to us. God with us. He says he will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the word and choose the right. Well, eating curds and honey uh, is indicative of poverty. And at this time, the uh, people of uh, Judah are, are fearful of captivity. Uh, they are fearful of the Assyrians. They have been attacked. They've been overrun. So we see the reality of a poverty here. Of course, in Jesus' time, when he was born, uh, the people of Israel were uh, captive and under the leadership and rulership of Rome. So it could apply and does, I think, in both situations where, where the uh, people of Judah and the people of Israel in the New Testament uh, would have a child that would be subject to, to, to poverty. Before the boy knows enough to reject wrong and choose the right, the land the two kings you dread will be laid to waste. And this, of course, occurred in 732 B.C., and this child that uh, was born could be a, born to Isaiah, could be Hezekiah, would, would have been about, uh, about two years old. So this would then follow before the boy knows enough to reject the right, or reject the wrong and choose the right. But notice the completeness or the thoroughness uh, of God's judgment of the land the two kings you dread will be laid to waste. Um, 
so this is a thorough, a complete a judgment that God brings about. It says in verse 17, the Lord will bring on you and on your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any since Ephraim broke away from Judah. Completeness, thoroughness, and of course referring to the separation, Ephraim uh, being another name for Israel and Judah. So you have not seen anything like this since Ephraim broke away from Judah. And then finally it says, he will bring down the king of Assyria. So we see here, almost two centuries later, what occurred as a result of Ahaz's treachery, of Ahaz's abandonment of God. We learn in this prophecy from Isaiah that God never makes a promise that is too good to be true. He said, I will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, fulfilled in the first chapter of Matthew. What a blessing to us. What a gift to us that we have a Savior, Christ the Lord, that during these troubling times, uh, during these times of uh, COVID, during these times of, of rioting in the streets, during these times when government seems to be asunder. God promises Emmanuel, God with us. If we stay strong in the faith, if we follow the, the, the promises of God and we are obedient to him, he will be with us. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter the troubles that we face as a country or as a city, God is with us. That promise was fulfilled in Matthew. Let's pray together. Father, we are so grateful uh, today that as we study the seventh chapter of Isaiah, we are so grateful that you made this promise to, to Ahaz that uh, was fulfilled in, in the birth of Jesus. We are so grateful, Father, that you, uh, like Ahaz, give us a second chance when we, when we fall short of what you would want us to be. Uh, Father, we are so grateful that then through the prophet Isaiah and now through your word and through a church and through Sunday school and through small group fellowship that you are with us. What great news, Father. What great news. And we pray, Father, that as we go out this day, as we go out in the days to come, as we continue our study of your word, that you will grow in us, that you will cause us uh, to stand firm in the faith, to stand firm in the faith. Father, we know that without you, uh, we can accomplish nothing, but with you, all things are possible. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.